so it always feels like Xbox Game Pass is up in question. It's been like this pretty much since its conception, and now because of a new report, consumers are once again concerned about its future and what they can possibly bring going forward. The question of whether or not it's winding down seems to have been raised online, and I do think people are maybe misinterpreting what this means. So. I will go over all of that today. Then we're also going to talk about one of my more anticipated games this year because the next big PlayStation 5 exclusive will be out next month and early impressions seems to have surprised a lot of people. It definitely doesn't really seem to be what people were expecting and honestly, I think this really makes this game even more exciting. So do stay tuned for that, but let's just go and jump right into the news, starting off with Dragon's Dogma 2. I understand that not everybody has been necessarily satisfied by the launch of Dragon's Dogma 2. On one side, it's a very good game, but it's also not necessarily the most polished game. And of course, the microtransactions has also been a big sticking point for a lot of people. Well, they still haven't fixed that part, but I am happy to say that Capcom has at least pushed out an update to address some of those issues on the PlayStation 5 and PC. Now, unfortunately, the Xbox version won't be updated until next week, but I will also say that when it comes to Dragon's Dogma 2, the Xbox Series X is a little bit more capable of handling its unstable frame rate just because its VRR is a little bit more advanced than what you have on the PlayStation 5. But this update will give PlayStation 5 owners the option to toggle ray tracing and motion blur options. Even more important here is that you can now cap the experience at no more than 30 frames per second. Basically, what this will do is give it a more consistent frame pacing experience, and that should make it feel a little bit smoother. Now, with that said, there could still be some frame dips from time to time. This doesn't mean that it's going to be perfect, but at the same time, its frame rate's not going to be just all over the place as it currently is. Now, there are some other fixes here as well, and this includes adding the option to start a new game when save data already exists. That's pretty cool. They're also changing the number of Art of Metamorphosis items available at pawn guilds in the game to 99. They're making the quest that allows players to acquire their own dwelling where they can save and rest available earlier in the game. Then they'll also be fixing miscellaneous text display issues as well as bug fixes. Then over on PC, they're improving the quality when DLSS super resolution is enabled, and they're fixing an issue related to the display of models under some specific settings. So, I mean, all things considered, this is a very welcome update, and Capcom, they are still working on other improvements, including frame rate in a future update. So we'll just have to kind of see how that goes later down the road, but I am glad to see Capcom come out here and get an update out this quick. I think capping it to 30 frames is going to be a major improvement for a lot of people, especially on the PlayStation 5, where that VRR doesn't activate below 48 frames per second. Now, we did also get some news for GTA 6. I mean, legitimately, this is probably uh, the most widely anticipated game ever made. It's been a long time since we've gotten a brand new Grand Theft Auto. As hard as it is to believe, it's been 11 long years and still counting. And that right there is the thing because the wait could go in longer if you believe certain rumors. Last week, there was a Kotaku report going around that claimed GTA 6 could possibly slip into 2026. Now, I didn't talk about this at the time because to me, that report uh, seemed a little bit dramatic and maybe even contradictory to some extent. They actually later gave an update that went against their original 2026 claim. It read, Kotaku has now heard from more sources that while early 2025 was at one point possible, Possible, it's no longer the target for Grand Theft Auto 6's launch. So when I read that, it doesn't really lead me to believe their original 2026 claim. If anything, it just kind of tells me that early 2025 is unlikely, which I mean, I was never really expecting anyways. So that's why I didn't really talk about this report before. But today we did get another report that seemingly douses the 2026 fire a bit. This is coming from Insider Gaming, which we know for a fact has great sources. So I am more inclined to believe this report, and it claims that after the Kotaku report went live, I asked around to a number of sources close to the game's development. Each one that spoke said that the game was on schedule, and that any suggestion of a GTA 6 delay at this point in development is pure conjecture. He even went on to say that as far as an early 2025 release date for GTA 6 is concerned, it was never going to be within the first couple of months of the year. So, there you go. You can just kind of ignore that Kotaku report for the time being. 
I wouldn't look into it all that much. And right now, as things currently stand, which can always change, but currently you should expect an undefined 2025 release unless something more credible happens. Okay, so next up here, let's go talk about a big story regarding Xbox Game Pass that broke online today. And there's been a lot of discussion about what this means for the future of Xbox Game Pass. Now, I do believe that there's some misinterpretation about what's happening here, which I'll get into here in just a minute. But what's happening is that a new report by PC Gamer went live titled, The Gold Rush Is Over. Slay the Spire and Darkest Dungeon devs say that Game Pass and Epic exclusive deals have dried up for independent developers. Now, one such developer went on to say that the scope for Game Pass deals has gone way down since the service first launched. They said, so has Epic. The gold rush is over. I come from the Northwest Territories. The town I'm from was built on gold and they found diamonds further north. Maybe another paradigm shift is waiting for us, but I definitely think the scale of the deals I'm hearing about is significantly diminished from the big swinging days. Certainly, we got our Epic deal at the right time. Now, I've seen a lot of people kind of freak out over this quote and I've even seen some people go so far as to claim that this is Xbox winding down Xbox Game Pass. Basically, the assumption that some people is drawing from that is that it's just not making enough money to support all of these day one titles for independent games, and that's why it's currently drying up for these independent deals. But I don't really feel like that's actually what's going on here, and let, let me go ahead and explain that. So Phil Spencer in the past did mention, and I'm paraphrasing here, but he said that they are a little bit more selective with what games they target for Game Pass now, because what they've discovered is that a couple high quality games speaks to their fan base more so than quantity. So yes, they aren't passing out as many of these deals as what they did early on because their strategy has in fact changed. More so in terms of offering independent studios less money, that is also loosely connected. I imagine what they're doing is that they're pumping a lot more money into bigger splash titles like Liza P and Persona 3 Reload than what they are with smaller independent games like they used to. Again, it just kind of comes back to the quantity versus quality debate. They want those bigger splash titles, and that doesn't necessarily mean they're not going to get smaller independent games as well. Just next month is one such example they have another Crab's Treasure, which looks absolutely excellent. I'm very excited about that game. Basically, what this means, though, is that they're being more selective. And this is also probably in part reason because they do have a lot of first-party studios now that can help support Game Pass more. I mean, if we want to talk about large investments for Game Pass, I mean, look no further than Activision Blizzard. Now, mobile was also a big part of that as well. But yes, they just invested $70 billion dollars that in part supports the Game Pass model. So Game Pass is definitely not winding down for the time being. It's just a different strategy than how they used to operate. I mean, if you look at Game Pass and its output two to three years ago, you will notice that it had more games coming in and out of the service. But a lot of the times they were much smaller games. And now they are being a little bit more selective. And it really just kind of depends on which strategy you like more. If anything, let me hear your opinion on this. Which strategy do you prefer? Do you like what Game Pass was doing more a few years ago when they had loads and loads of smaller games? Or do you like this new direction where they're being a little bit more selective with their inclusions? Let me hear your thoughts. Now, if you're searching for a game to play this weekend though, and if you have a PlayStation 5, well, you have a very good opportunity because Stellar Blades demo just released today. Now, I haven't played this myself yet. I'm pretty much already sold on this game as is, but I've heard the demo is the opening part of the game, and if you end up buying Stellar Blade, all of your progress will indeed carry over. Now, the reason I bring all of this up, though, is because early impressions are also making their way online today, and from everything that I've seen and heard, the impressions are very positive, but with one major twist. See, what we know about Stellar Blade is that it's inspired by Nier Automata and Bayonetta. That's no big secret. I mean, you can easily see the resemblance with these games, especially when it comes to Nier. But what's so surprising about the gameplay that's been discovered today is that it also seemingly has a lot of resemblance to the Soulsborne games, especially being Sekiro. I've consistently heard that it's a slower and more deliberate game than what you might expect. 
I mean, even for me, I thought it was going to be a fast-paced hack-and-slash type of game similar to something like God of War, but no, that's not the case. Stellar Blade seems to emphasize your defensive approach just as much as it does offense. It also has bonfire-like locations and an interconnected world with shortcuts, much like you would expect from the FromSoft games. So it does seem like they drew a lot of inspiration from games like Dark Souls and Sekiro as well. And, you know, with this newfound information... Honestly, it actually makes Stellar Blade, to me, stand out that much more. Now, if you are worried about the challenge, though, I have heard that it's challenging, but not quite as challenging as the Dark Souls series. It also does have an easy mode as well, so you can just play it that way if you want. But I am actually very excited about this combination. The combination of something like Nier and Sekiro... You know, to me, that sounds like a special blend of amazing. If possible, I'm even more excited than what I already was. And that's always been the thing about this game. If you look at it, the visuals are obviously fantastic. But does it play as good as it looks? And that's always really been the question. And so far, it does sound like that's very much the case. So I'm happy to say, go and check out the demo this weekend. And if you enjoy it, the full game will be out next month on April 26th. Sadly, it's the same day as Sandland. I don't know about that, but with Stellar Blade, it's looking really good. Now, one last topic before I go. It does appear that Minecraft is getting a next generation update. This was spotted on the PSN backend, and it does suggest that a PS5 version is on the way. Now, the Xbox version was recently optimized for the Xbox series to have 4K support and things like that. So I have a feeling the PS5 version is going to be very similar in this situation. But it does sound like if you do play on a PS5 and if you play Minecraft, there will be an update here sometime soon. Anyways, though, that's going to be it for this episode. I do hope you all enjoy a fantastic, great weekend. Again, you can play Stellar Blade right now if you want. But until next time, peace out.